I'll do a check. And we are live. Welcome everyone to our second session of this Metavisionaries Live. And today we have Dr. Hilde with us. Wasim, would you like to introduce Hilde? <laughs> doing that right now just going to do a quick check and then uh, we're ready to go okay cool oh you have the nice wonderful is that the ai box or the ice cube and the ice cube cool two cubes two cubes that i can show but there's no fun. <laughs> perfect i think we're live was in yes we are live because I can't, I'm checking here on YouTube. Cool. So, who would you like to introduce, Hilde? It would. Uh, give me one second. So, so welcome, everybody. Uh, this is going to be a fantastic live session. Uh, we're going to enjoy this. So, I want to welcome uh, Hilda, who is my uh, fun fact playing chess player, who I will let you know more details about and uh, that's the deal that we really get uh, done. Um, so Hilda, welcome. Hilda is from uh, uh, Ice Cubes and Space Apps who are partners who are participating with us in creating this fantastic joint venture which we will be uh, talking about. So uh, Hilda, welcome. Thank you and good evening Wasim, Aisha and Camilo. Excited to be here. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Um, Hilde for joining us. Wasim, if maybe you can share uh, my screen, please, for a second. There we go. Nice. So for all of you uh, joining us today, uh, we are going to talk about the Ice Cubes, which is basically a platform that allows you to do research on board the space station. And when we talk about research, it's any kind of research from a space art to biology to space medicine and Hilde is one of the person or one of the people behind this amazing project development. Um, in the video we can see um, is an astronaut Alexander Gerst uh, placing the ice cubes modules onto the ice cubes facility, facility which is I am not mistaken Hilde is in the Columbus module on board the ISS correct? Correct yes and Hilde tell us my first question, um, how many cubes have you guys launched so far? So how many cubes have you sent to the ISS in, this, in these years? Ooh, I, uh, uh, now, that's already a tough question, <laughs> but I think around 15, something wow. of that nature. Um, yeah, something of that size, I would think. Yeah, and this, 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 is indeed, this is indeed an amazing development. And... Maybe let me let me let me let me start our conversation. If you can tell us a little bit more about the, for example, the Space Innovation Labs, which uh, it's a new project that uh, a, a space application services and metavisionaries are working together to facilitate access to commercial um, any kind of entity institution to for commercialization of space. Like how you do that, and what's the link between the metaverse? and these ice cubes with the ISS. Yeah, absolutely. So Wasim was already telling that we're setting up um, a new joint venture called Metaspace. And the target is to create a global network of space innovation labs. Um, we target to set 25 in a relatively uh, short time all over the globe. Um, these are physical hubs or physical centers on Earth um, that link directly to infrastructure in space and that are connected also to the metaverse. And so we think jointly we have a very strong uh, asset that allows people to access space, but also access um, capacity building and new technologies, frontier technologies uh, through the metaverse, and these three aspects combined between access to space and infrastructure in space, access to those physical locations on the globe, and access to the metaverse, we think is very synergetic and strong. 
um, to allow people to get access to all of that, to allow people to get access to this capacity building and to allow people to get involved in space missions, in space data uh, and applications that come from that. That's amazing. And I know that, uh, for example, now that we talk about the Space Innovation Labs of the Global Network, um, um, I know that we have now six so far in different locations. I think in the next slide, Wasim, is the, um, is the Global Network. We have the Netherlands, of course, in Norway. We have uh, Brussels in Belgium. In Belgium, <laughs> uh, in Brussels. Uh, we are also having now in, in Malta, Soon we will have in, in Kaos, in the King Abdulaziz uh, Science, uh, Institute for Science and Technology. Uh, we will also have one in Jeddah, uh, sorry, in Qatar soon as well. Um, also in New York. So there are a lot of things happening um, with this. Wasim, let me, let me ask this to you. How do you see the connection, the seamless connection between the metaverse and the... the uh, the ice cubes using the Space Innovation Lab as a ground set. Right, so um, I think uh, uh, for me, it's two things. One, when we talk about access to space and frontier technologies, we know that um, this is something that is really going to define uh, our lives in whether the way we learn or the way we work or, or how we uh, apply these uh, different modalities in, in, in various ways. but. How do we get that across? Um, for me, uh, the metaverse is an environment where you can simulate the environment of space. You can bring in experts to come together and build projects. You can uh, enhance the learning experience by bringing people from all around the world with learners from all around the world. Uh, and, and, and you can um, have this fantastic work piece where you could be born in a country that uh, may not have a space agency, but you could connect with people like Hilda or um, uh, Jim Green or Tara Rutley or any of these fantastic people. Uh, that's one. And number two, um, imagine you can now simulate uh, uh, research. You can actually uh, think about what you're going to implement in the physical world, just trial it with industrial uh, application metaverses like NVIDIA, for example. So for me, uh, you can learn from anywhere, you can collaborate from anywhere, and most importantly, you can try and test whatever you want to do in this uh, environment, which then you can learn from and then think about doing in, in, in uh, physical reality as such. That's wonderful. And for example, something that I really love about the ice cubes, you know, and everything uh, regarding how involved art, and this is Ayesha's speciality, with all the digital art, hey Harry, uh, welcome to the welcome to the to the live. Um, hi Felipe, um, Hilde. Um, I know that, for example, last year with the with the Oscar Cube from Belgium, you guys put an art. Uh, Wasim, if maybe you can share my screen, please, uh, with the with the ice cube and this beautiful artwork. Um, Hilde, can you please tell us a little bit more about like the, the concept behind it and why you guys decided uh, alongside the Oscar uh, Cube team to put art and specifically designing like the artwork for the external just for the aesthetics of the Cube, please? Yeah, so I mean, we absolutely love the link and the intersection between art, space, science, and also artificial intelligence. And I know that's, with, uh, that's resonating with Aisha as well, so for sure she will she will jump in as well. Um, so we have been doing some art uh, projects. Um, for example, we in the one of the first cubes that we launched, and, and when I say cubes, these are little modules that are like these uh, or, or a bit bigger that we launched to the space station. One of them was actually an art project, an interactive art project by a Mexican artist, Nahum, um, that he built together with the International Space University, by the way, one of our very important partners as well. Um, and so it, it was fantastic, I thought. It was an interactive art project where people on the ground could interact through their heart rate um, directly with a kaleidoscope in space that was changing its uh, frequency with the heart rate of the people on the ground. So I thought it was really a nice idea to show how people could interact between ground and 
space uh, to art, to an art setup. Uh, this one that you're showing, um, this is indeed a cube that was flown by uh, a team from the university in Hasselt um, together with some partners. And in fact, they did a, um, a competition around the design of the external housing of their cube, which I thought was really marvelous. In fact, this I, I also, it was my preferred, but there were other very nice ones. You can look them up actually on their Facebook. They're still there. I checked today. Um, and so they they selected one and they laser etched it on their cube, which I think makes it really uh, stand out. And again, passes this message of um, how art is intersected with uh, with space. And I mean, I think it's really a it, it touches on on boards, computer boards, but at the same time shows a kind of magnetic field. Uh, so I mean, it has a lot of elements that are combined in the design. Uh, on the outside of their cube, which I really, I really like. And I see Professor Joseph Bohr connected. Hi, Professor Joseph. You will be on our live next week. And now that I, now that I see uh, Professor Bohr uh, popping up, Hilde, tell us a little bit more about the project Mallet. And, and maybe this is a question for you and Wasim, how we are going to launch digital art to the ISS with project Mallet. You want to get going, Wasim, or I, I get going? <laughs> You're on mute. Aisha, I'd love for you to come in here as well. Um, so yeah. the Project Malath uh, uh, is uh, designed uh, uh, with a team uh, led by uh, Professor Joseph Borg, who will be here next week talking about it. And uh, it, it kind of relates to what we're trying to do with Space Innovation Labs. Now, um, as, as Hilda mentioned, our, our goal is to provide access to frontier technologies and innovation labs. And one of the things we do is highlight STEM and STEAM. So this experiment, Project Mallet, is specifically uh, uh, focused on uh, patients with diabetes uh, suffering from foot ulcers. And we're going to be looking at this fantastic, unique laboratory, which is microgravity in the ISS, and looking at what happens to bacteria uh, in our microbiome uh, for patients of uh, um, uh, suffering from uh, that particular uh, disease. And one of the things that we're also going to be able to do is send art and music to space uh, to inspire and get people excited about STEM and STEAM and, and, and see, you know, that relationship. And, and, and Hilda, I've I got to ask you, um, <laughs> Joseph is going to send his clone next week. Um, with, with this environment, how does healthcare benefit from that space environment? Yeah, indeed, the, the, the space environment that we have <laughs> access to um, is really unique. Um, so the fact that you don't need to deal with gravity, it allows to address um, certain research, certain R&D, certain applications that, that you cannot achieve on Earth. And we like to do that in different application areas. And health is one very strong one because they're not having to deal with gravity has a lot of very beneficial consequences. For example, for cell uh, cells that you can grow or culture under this environment, but also for proteins that you can crystallize and so on. And here in the Mallet project, they actually use this space environment to look at, as, as Wasim explained, these human skin microbiome uh, samples and, and the genetics um, that they see from that. Um, I absolutely love it and I really see it as um, a, a great first example of how we want um, to work in this global network of space innovation labs. So this uh, in fact, the Malta Cube or Mallet Cube is the third one in a series that Professor Borge uh, initiated. But I would dare to say that the third one is extra special because it represents um, an, a large international collaboration now. So there's Professor Borge in Malta, there's US scientists uh, involved, um, there's Saudi um, scientists involved, there's um, UK scientists involved. Also, the samples are actually international samples, so they come from different populations, which makes it um, scientifically uh, even more interesting because you can compare between different populations. Wasim mentioned that it carries along uh, art project, digital art uh, that will be streamed. 
Um, and I don't know if we can already mention that, but in fact, the operations on board will be done um, by the UAE astronaut that launched today, uh, for which big congrats also for the UAE and, and the Arab world. I think it's fantastic. Um, and I think that really, for me, expresses what we want to do through this global network of space innovation labs. So we want to launch missions to space, do research in space that benefit all of these different labs. And so people from the different labs can get access to the samples, can get access to the data, can get access to the artwork generated. Um, we share, I mean, how the operations are done and it becomes really a multi faceted, uh, multi-national, uh, uh, truly collaborative uh, project. And, and this little cube, you were showing it in the, in the metaverse version, it's really, I mean, it's a bit bigger than the one I have here, but it's still a small cube. And it carries now a gigantic load in terms of uh, the relevance, the international uh, aspects, the, the collaboration around it, the samples, the scientific value, the artistic value. So it's really... I think a, f a fantastic uh, first example of how we want to achieve those goals also through this uh, network uh, of space innovation labs and the link to the metaverse as well. Wasim, would you like to mention something about like our model here in, in, in the lecture domain, our metaverse environment? Yeah, sure. Um, uh, so um, this, uh, uh, we, we talked about how the metaverse links. Well. Um, this is uh, a model of what the cube looks like and what the inside of that cube looks like, where these tissue samples are going to uh, sit. And one of the things we're going to be doing is teaching uh, through this these space innovation labs and the metaship is how you create these cubes. What is the engineering process behind it? What is the science that goes in there? What does that look like? And you can simulate it in a virtual environment put it together before we finally send it uh, to the space station, as as, as you're saying, uh, seeing right now. Um, Aisha, you had a question to follow up because yeah. this uh, box will also be used in, 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 uh, in the AI uh, setting as well. Yeah, I actually had a question from uh, Dr. Hilda because, uh, Dr. Hilda, you talked about such fascinating things and especially your example with uh, the, the art project with light and scope. Uh, and given the era that we're now moving in, which is like related to AI, art, and so on. So what do you think with the microgravity that we have and the experiments that you've been sending to ISS? How how can we like better uh, collaborate with AI? And what are the challenges in that uh, specific domain? Keeping in mind the artists, innovators, you know, what are the projects that we can do with that? Yeah, so I think the, the microgravity environment is already fantastic as it is um, for, for research folks. But now if you bring in artificial intelligence in that mix, I mean, that, that brings it even to another level, uh, both for the research aspects. So you can imagine, for example, this particular cube that you see here in the metaverse. Um, so we do have artificial intelligence capability on board. So you, you can imagine that images or data from that cube go directly into the artificial intelligence that uh, processes the data, the images, and spits out some response and makes it react. Uh, and so you can think of concepts like, for example, a greenhouse. So we, we actually launched a greenhouse as one of our, our first cubes as well. Um, so you can imagine plants growing uh, in space, um, but you can have the artificial intelligence following along and deciding based on the images from those plants by itself when these plants may need um, nutrition or may need water and so on. So that all becomes possible through AI, uh, making that part of the bigger picture. But also here in what um, Camilo was showing in the whole metaverse, I mean, how we can use this AI, how we can use augmented reality uh, virtual reality or mixed reality um, to go, as you were saying, to collaboratively uh, design, to fast prototype certain uh, concepts, uh, to accelerate innovation. Um, all of that is now possible through these new uh, AI, AR, VR uh, means and through the metaverse uh, joint uh, environment. We can all access that. And, and also, I mean, specifically on the art side, I mean, the link of art and AI and generate art through AI. I mean, 
coming from space, it's, it's really fantastic. It opens so many doors. And other than the microgravity, what are, what are the other factors that you think uh, they directly affect the data that we send through these ice cubes and, you know, anything that we send through? And so uh, in the International Space Station, like what are the other uh, elements that affect? Maybe it's the, it's the, the zero gravity is one element, right? So are there any other that affect the data? Absolutely. So the, uh, there is indeed the microgravity, which I think is a very, very uh, important and strong element. There's also the effect of radiation. So you have radiation hitting, even though the space station is at what we call lower orbit, so relatively close by the Earth, you still have a quite increased um, radiation level. In fact, with the artificial intelligence that we have on board, we started a challenge um, that we set up in South Asia with a number of partners or student teams. And the winning student team actually came up with um, artificial intelligence that allows to predict um, what is called single event upsets. So these are when um, radiation hits uh, a computer board, it can actually change a zero in a one or a one in a zero, and it can lead to upsets. Um, and in fact, they have thought of a way, a machine learning way that allows to predict these single event upsets, which are really I mean, making a lot of people upset in the space environment because it disturbs your computer, it disturbs your mm -hmm. machine. So it's a fantastic example of how artificial intelligence, which in all honesty has been mm -hmm. around for quite a while, but now we're really coming to a level where it's integrated into uh, research, integrated into operational systems. Uh, and that's truly exciting, I think, uh, that we are reaching that point. But when we talk about AI, uh, like how fast is the machine learning going hand in hand? Because obviously when it comes to these space, everything is a bit more complicated, right? Because we don't have much reach uh, to the area as yet. But then how is machine learning coping to that? Or do you think there's still a lot of work that is needed in that area, according to your experience? Oh, for sure, there's still a lot of work needed, but uh, it's all coming together. So it allows to accelerate um uh, and skip stages now um, that we would not have been able before and so for sure for the machine learning you need to i mean <laughs> you need to learn the machine needs to learn so you need to um, teach it feed it with data that you gather and so on but all of that uh, yeah we see is accelerating really uh, quite a lot and so yeah mm -hmm. it becomes really uh, exciting uh, for it these are exciting times as we speak uh, now so for sure still a lot to be done but it's happening about to speak Hilda, um we, we we summarized uh the concepts of for example how ai is used uh, on the space station uh, we've talked about uh, things like how art and, and creativity will be involved and in some of the activities we're doing but as much as i know you we constantly get this question uh, first of all, you know, why space? I, and, and I know uh, we talk about it enough, uh, but, but I don't think it's talked about it enough. Uh, so what, why space? Why is it a national matter? And, and why should communities really uh, be involved in, 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 in the importance of it? Yeah, I think, I mean, the why space, there's different um, chapters to address. Um, I mean, for me, in, in first instance, if you ask me personally, why space? Well, it's humankind's nature. It's humankind's nature to explore. So we want to, uh, we want to go out and find out. And I, I personally, I mean, I'm a scientist from background, so I love the idea that we don't know everything and that every day we're pushing the frontiers uh, a tiny bit. And that's exactly what we go and do in space. So for me, that's chapter number two. Chapter number two. Uh, one, sorry, chapter number two, I think is also a chapter that's not talked um, enough about, and that is the gigantic um, uh, benefit for Earth from space. Um, and so what we are setting up with the Global Network of Space Innovation Labs and this joint venture Metaspace also really addresses this chapter two, like, okay, which applications um, can come out of space, can benefit from space? And especially we, we were touching already on, on the whole health-related um, uh, applications. I think it's gigantic. It has so much potential to use this environment of space also for uh, the benefit of us here on Earth. 
Um, but also, and that's um, yet another chapter we haven't touched on, but the whole earth observation data, remote sensing data, um, there is so much uh, data being generated and we should really leverage and optimize the use of that data uh, to a maximum uh, and use that, that data for, I mean, assessing water on earth, assessing the, the land on earth, um, species, all of that data is existing as of today and it can actually be um, processed, it can be visualized and it may, can be made accessible uh, for people uh, to make use of that. And so I think um, investing in space or, or yeah, why is it a national matter? I think it's really something where people um, and, and nations want to get involved. I mean, because it's it's there for the for the exploration of humankind, but also for for the the applications potential uh, for us uh, here on Earth. And um, sorry, go on. Um, thank you, Wasim. Let me ask you this: We talk about AI, we talk about metaverse, and we talk about how space AI and metaverse are so important, especially space for the let's say the future of human as a species, right? But so far we need to put it a little bit more grounded and some people would like to say, okay, how can we access that? Meaning, how can institutions, parents, uh, students, uh, um, the current generation, the current um, you know, workforce can get involved on, on, on this and more directly, how can, for example, the current workforce get involved uh, with the Space Innovation Labs. Yeah, and that's entirely what we want to target by setting up this network of Space Innovation Labs, by linking it to the metaverse to make it accessible for any anybody, for any individual, for any agency, for any company, um, and to make them part of this whole uh, setup that allows for capacity building, that allows for people to acquire new skills um, through the metaverse by talking to, uh, I mean, what he mentioned already, Dr. Jim Green, that is part uh, and doing a, a lot of those sessions, Dr. Tara Rotley and so on. These are, I mean, I don't know if Jim appreciates if we mention the decades of, of space work he has been doing, but it's a lot of decades. Um, so it's fantastic if that all becomes accessible for people um, on an individual basis, they can basically subscribe, they can reach out, they can collaborate um, through the setup uh, of the Space Innovation Labs, through uh, accessing the metaverse, and all become part of this. Um, actually, through a, a relatively or a, a low threshold um, way of, of the metaverse that is also very immersive, where they can interact with people from the other side of the world, uh, at ease. Uh, so, and maybe Wasim, you want to say a bit more on the immersive and social uh, nature of the metaverse environment um, for these educational and capacity building uh, possibilities. Yeah, I mean, uh, this is an example of where you're able to learn, uh, uh, you know, specific skills uh, uh, utilizing uh, virtual reality, uh, augmented reality is going to play a part like how to use a robotic arm or how you train astronauts. I mean, these are just some of the skills that we're looking at that, that we're really going to be able to uh, revolutionize. The fact that you can have experts, because I think it's one of the key things is all about speed and uh, how quickly you can uh, bring that uh, together. And I think one of the key things is, you know, let's talk about uh, advanced spacecraft or their creation. The fact that someone like Jim Adams sitting in the US can come in and show us how to how how that whole process comes together in VR and how incredible that is. I think that's the magic. It is the ability to connect and collaborate anywhere, anytime with any expert without having to catch a flight. And that link to our physical lab capacity is what makes this incredible. Here, for example, what you are showing, Wasim, um, is basically one of the applications and how we can, for example, learn robotics, in this specific example, space robotics, uh, using the metaverse, which is a great tool because when I was uh, studying, like one of my um, uh, difficult um, classes was in understanding the rotations, the matrices, you know, like the, 
the, the points of rotation for the robots. So I think this, this, is, this is a great tool, of course, for, for learning. And now that we put it in, in, into space, um, you know, like that's like the, the next level. Um, I see what roles do sports entertainment creativity play in space and these innovation labs. Wow. Uh, well, I think that's a question for Wasim or, or Ayesha. Um, well, um, I, I, Hilda, you have a media set on the space station. Uh, what does that media set do? The fact that these space innovation labs are going to be connected to this media set. Uh, and, and then uh, we can talk about, uh, you know, if you're an artist or a musician, how you can get involved. For example, how you can learn skills like AI uh, and, and even some of the uh, coding and AI events you've done, Hilda, for six-year-olds and so on. So uh, I'll, I'll let you take that. Yeah, absolutely. So we have this media set on board again of the European mod in, in the European module currently. It might move at some point. Um, mm -hmm. It allows to interact actually with the the crew members that are on board of the space station. We started using it during the very first fully commercial mission to the space station that was uh, done by a US company called Axiom, um, Axiom One. And so we used it during that week for 42 events, um, interacting with press, interacting with students, interacting with artists. Um, it has a lot of potential uh, in, in the direction of that question. Like we can use it to interact uh, with people on the ground, with people uh, from the enterna entertainment uh, sector that can ask uh, questions. Maybe some of you have seen um, the, the conversation between um, footballer Mbappé <laughs> that you probably all know. I think, I think Wasim has that, that uh, a video somewhere. Maybe we can, we, we can show it. Yeah, and, and uh, the, the French astronaut Thomas Pesquet, and they had a very nice conversation on how their two um, uh, functions or professions, how they relate and what they have in common. I thought it was very inspirational. I think it's very important to come to that question to link space and access to space also with um, entertainment, with sports, with all of that, because it makes it accessible. It allows people to engage, to relate to it, um, and so that they see what is the application uh, back uh, to Earth, but also how these people, how it can serve as, as an inspiration, what commonalities there are and also all of the different aspects of um, roles and, and jobs that do relate to space, because people often think of space as being these niche environments where we only need um, engineers and scientists. But I think that's uh, far from the truth, has never been the truth. But as of today, it's further from the truth than ever, because we do need um, designers, we do need artists, we do need um, all of these people, visionary thinkers, um, technology developers, innovators, entrepreneurs, um, they're all connected to space and we all need them in this space ecosystem to really leverage that space environment up to the maximum. You know, I want to bring this comment from Alison uh, uh, in regards to NVIDIA. Um, when I grew up, I grew up playing games and when you looked at uh, uh, your graphics cards, and NVIDIA's name always came up. Recently, we've had a great, uh, phenomenal conversation with our folks at NVIDIA about the industrial application for the Omniverse. And interestingly, we already use uh, uh, AI box uh, by NVIDIA on the space station. Hilda, tell us, and the reason why I mention that is you think gaming and what gaming has a role in terms of space and, and, and innovation. I mean, the, 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 there is more dots connected than you think. So tell us about the uh, AI box you're uh, from NVIDIA you're currently using and, and some of the things which I have no shame in saying, hey, NVIDIA's Omniverse is phenomenal. Uh, mm -hmm. The industrial application mm -hmm. is phenomenal. Uh, I so, mean, so NVIDIA, with the, NVIDIA with, with the Omniverse have now like the BMW digital twin uh, manufacturer manufacturing uh, facilities just to set up like the, the manufacturing line to, uh, you know, like to prove processes where, where they should prove, like put the, 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 the technicians, like just to just improve it. Like that's a, that's a great industrial application uh, for the metaverse in, in the manufacturing of, of automotives. 
Yeah, absolutely. No, I think, I mean, indeed, as Wasim was saying, we have this artificial intelligence box. It's based on NVIDIA Jetson uh, boards. Um, and so, yeah, I mentioned that we are seeing so much usage of artificial intelligence on board for research, but also, I mean, we're coming to a time where artificial intelligence will be built into technologies for space op operations, uh, for health applications, um, for, I mean, using AI for crew health, for example. Um, and so, yeah, as Wasim was saying, we had this amazing visit uh, to NVIDIA where we got to see um, some of their very strong assets and how it's all built on, on research. So they stole my heart uh, there, of course. I mean, the, the modeling they can do is amazing. Um, for example, you can imagine if you want to do fluid or material um, research in the space environment that allows to achieve results that you cannot make on Earth. For example, you can melt uh, alloys uh, in space to deduce uh, data for um, material manufacturing uh, purposes. And if you can model that in an AI environment, um, I mean, the, the results you can obtain are mind blowing, I think. But also in terms of the whole uh, setup of yeah, you mentioned digital twins. I mean, I think, I mean, there's fantastic videos of, of what you mentioned. I mean, the factories, digital twins, but also building a digital twin of these labs that we are setting up, these space innovation labs uh, network, uh, and to create digital twins and to be able to collaboratively um, Maybe design. Wasim can share my screen while I show in, the, in our digital twin of one of our space innovation labs in the metaverse, please. Why you explain it, Hilde? Yeah, so then we can go and, and design collaboratively um, through these, these um, I mean, in this case, possibly NVIDIA-based uh, uh, setups. And, and that's really, I think it's, I mean, mind-blowing how people can connect to that um, and how they can build on these capabilities whether that's for research, for design and development, for technologies, for um, educational purposes, I think uh, that, I mean, these possibilities are endless. And also, for example, while, while the lab uh, loads us in my computer, um, we are a MetaVisionaries. We are actually working on creating a digital twin of one of the faculties of Qatar University. So imagine it's like not only for manufacturing, not only for research in this specific case but also for education we're creating like digital twins um of universities like now imagine like having like i don't know entire constellation of satellites uh a digital twin and then model the processes model the single events that we were uh, talking earlier like the the possibilities are endless uh wasim if you can share again my screen please i want to show the audience the the digital twin of our space innovation lab so this is how it looks. Hilde, would you like to describe it? Yeah, so this is, um, I mean, one uh, initial setup of what the Space Innovation Lab can look like. So it has um, different elements uh, and you can walk through it, actually. So there's an element where engineering, design and development uh, can, ha ha uh, can happen, uh, can happen collaboratively. And this, where you I now know. are, is the operational um, center. Um, yeah where we can actually connect operationally. Ah, you go <laughs> to the, the engineering. Um, yeah, this is the engineering. And now, uh, since we, you were mentioning it, and now let's go back to the control room. Yep. So we do have um, our own control center in Brussels for, from where we command um, our facility on board the space station. But in fact, all of the uh, the people that actually launch uh, a cube like like this here, um, they can actually from their um, lab or from their um, home even, they can connect operationally to their module in space, and they can send commands through uh, an operational setup that they can install themselves. Um, that looks actually like the one that you are showing, uh, Camilo. For example, Professor Borch has this type of setup um, with Space Omics, uh, the, the company that he, he recently set up. They have this um, setup operational uh, installed so that they can send commands and, and see the data and the images that are coming from space directly. And so we want to have here uh, a digital twin where we can also go in 
also uh, operationally look at things and how how they can work and and uh, we can test up front and again collaboratively um, design and, and, and develop um, one question. Uh, sorry yes can please I, yes I go ahead please 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, Dr. Hilda, I just had a question uh, regarding the AR and VR. So we've talked about AI, we've talked about metaverse and how it all connects with uh, the innovation labs. Um, but whoever is interested in these technologies, which we don't see much at the moment, but AR and VR is something that can really help us understanding the fluid dynamics, understanding how things operate in space. So with the media sets, do you have any use cases that we can you know, discuss here just for the people uh, who really want to study these things, the students who really want to look into this as a career? So, so do you have any uh, examples of that or maybe experiments that you can share with us? Um, sure. I mean, so one, I mentioned this example of, of um, materials, for example, or fluids where you can actually model um, that also based on, on um, AR, VR um, capabilities and that you can research both uh, in space uh, and, and on Earth. We're also discussing like, um, I mean, I mentioned protein crystallization, for example, which is actually also very, um, the, the space environment is very beneficial. When you do that in space, you get crystals that are much larger and of a better structure than when you crystallize the same proteins uh, on an in an earth environment. And so imagine that you can um, model that uh, process as well and, and actually go into uh, yeah. those aspects. Uh, I think it's phenomenal. But also, yeah, I, I think we were touching on the whole AR and VR for more operational um, um, skills or operational uh, testing. Uh, I mean, the video that uh, Camilo showed with uh, the robotics and the exoskeleton um, that is used actually also for uh, space-based um, technology testing, and you can model that again through AR and VR. I mean, it's yeah, it's fantastic. And then to make that reachable for educational um, goals as well uh, and, and accessible, I think yeah, that's uh, absolutely yeah. great. Does um, it have a connection with 3D printing or spacesuit design or something of that sort? Yeah. Just for anyone who. <laughs> like myself, interested in that field. <laughs> no, absolutely. I mean, 3D printing in a space environment uh, is is super uh, interesting. Huh? Uh, you know, I think. I mean, there's quite some <laughs> ideas. I mean, we we use a lot of 3D printing for uh, these modules that, that we actually launch. There's a lot of 3D printing involved, but also the the whole idea of uh, printing 3D printing uh, assets in space and to bring uh, or to use uh, resources what is called in situ. Um, and so to use resources that you find in space and to actually 3D print from that, I think is uh, very interesting. And then you touch also on, uh, I mean, space suits, textiles and, and all of that. Yeah, it's also very interesting for and in a space environment, um, how to how to get there. And also the, the whole area of biomanufacturing, I think is super interesting as well, like how we can use the environment of space to manufacture certain things, um, whether that's manufacturing in, in, the, in the terms of materials or manufacturing of biomanufacturing. Um, I mean, people talking about 3D bioprinting of organs, for example, for the future, um, but also how this can be relevant uh, for biomanufacturing in space, I mean, like, can we yeah. print uh, in the future the food of our astronauts? Uh, can we do uh, cellular meat production uh, in a space environment? Is is super interesting uh, fields of of, uh, of research of application. So, yeah, Alison is saying uh, absolutely 3D printing uh, for new habitations, uh, habitats uh, with robots and so on. So, yeah. That's, but I are you good at? I are you doing? One of the things Alison mentioned, and also when we were out there with the guys uh, from NVIDIA, um, we are actually doing the first team project with the International Space University, us, Metaspace, and the ISU in Brazil, led by Dr. Jim Green, who was the former chief scientist of NASA. This is going to be the first team project utilizing Metaverse and for space applications. So we're going to have a team 
of students uh, who are going to be led. In fact, Milo, you're going to be leading some of this, uh, where they're going to have to find solutions utilizing the metaverse for space applications. And, um, you know, one of the things that we're looking at is habitats and environments, what we can build and, and model in the metaverse, like settling on the moon or, or, or on Mars. Uh, and, and why this is important for the Earth itself is how do you manage those harsh environments, what we can learn and apply on the Earth itself for the harsh environments that we're currently going to be seeing with climate change. Hilda, what do you think? That I should unmute. Yeah, <laughs> no, absolutely. I think, um, I mean, space is a, a harsh environment. We need to understand how how we can um, evolve and how we can build and how we can uh, get there, how we can use this environment, but also how we can withstand this environment. And we need to, again, not only apply that for space exploration, but indeed also apply that for here on Earth, as you said. Um, I'm thinking also about everything that relates to, to plants, for example. I mean, to learn like how when we grow them in a space environment, what it can learn us for uh, stressors here on Earth and, and to grow um, certain, I mean, for example, um, micro uh, greens like in, in desert environments, for example, there's an awful lot that we can uh, learn uh, in, in space research also for those uh, scopes. And I think the whole um, uh, vertical, let's say, uh, I mean, we mentioned health, but the other uh, very important vertical, I would say, is everything that relates to sustainability and what we can learn uh, from uh, space uh, research, but also space data. I mean, we talked about Earth observation data, remote sensing data, how it can help us and is already helping us in the whole uh, climate change and uh, sustainability, how we can monitor water, land uh, quality uh, and so on. Uh, yeah, I think it will only become uh, more and more important and we should... Hilde, now that you mentioned all of these careers like maybe the next question will be like what advice would you give to young people interested in pursuing a career in space science and technology and of course the keeping in mind the intersection between ai and microgravity um since the, that's like basically the link that we're um, discussing here yeah advice i always <laughs> don't feel well placed to give advice but i mean the advice that you would hear and that i i do relate a lot to is follow your dream i mean really listen to your heart what what your heart tells you that touches you and know that space is is very close to you i mean you yesterday evening i was taking my son to a swimming lesson we came out and we saw venus and jupiter uh, next to each other, which at the moment is very uh, exceptional. I mean, whenever you talk to kids uh, and you show them these type of things, it's, I mean, you see their eyes dim and, and glow, um, but we need to keep on passing that message that it's not something for which they need to obtain 17 degrees and that is very far away from them. No, it's really reachable um i mean when we were in dubai a couple of weeks uh, i don't remember where, why because all of the days go in and out <laughs> with uh, it was him uh, we were in dubai we met this fantastic Kuwait lady uh, very young and uh, full of inspiration and she brought the first uh, kuwaiti uh, space uh, cubes let's say um uh, to space um so and i think she was really an inspiration for us and we said afterwards she probably doesn't realize how much of an inspiration she is um, and how much she brings uh, i mean to her country to her fellow uh, students fellow kids um, i think it's so valuable when they i mean when they follow their dreams and they believe that they can actually implement because they can actually implement mm -hmm. uh, so yeah that i think for me would be follow your dream and, and know that it's out there for you. Uh, you can get it at your fingertips. And that's also what we want to bring with, uh, with the network of Space Innovation Labs and the Meta Space uh, Metaverse is really bring I'm it to you. And pursuing a space dream doesn't mean that you have to be an engineer per se. You can yeah. be a medical doctor. You can even be a football player. Maybe Wasim wants to share my screen. Uh, <laughs> last year, uh, for the FIFA preparations, 
Luis Figo team up with Mastercard basically to break a world record, let's say uh, this way, a genius record to play football in microgravity. So now you don't you don't even need to pursue a, car a career in science. You just have to you just have to show your passion uh, and, lo and love for the space and pursue it. Here yeah. you can see like these football players, Luis Figo playing football in microgravity. I mean, how 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 cool is that? You know, like how um, how all these things are getting into in like interconnected. And talking about the medical sciences, it's like. Yeah. There are a lot of things happening uh, for medical research because if we take Project Mallet into consideration, it's like how you do uh, research in a space for pursuing a treatment, a better treatment for for the ulcers that you get uh, of, of this disease. So there is a million of things, gazillion of things. So I think like one of the conclusions that you can that we can get out of this fruitful and amazing discussion over the last 50 minutes is like. A space is for everyone. A space is for anywhere, right? And no matter the career that you pursue, no matter what your passion is, there is always an application in a space for for uh, for for you. E either medical research. Now um, that I remember, we have the med med medicines in a space. It's a it's secretive space course in Oxford. So for all those pharmaceutical people, um, some somehow eager to learn more about the space medicine, please join us in Oxford in November uh, this year. We will have the executive space course in partnership with the International Space University, where we will be learning about more about pharmaceuticals, medical treatments and stuff like that. Now you see like the, all these like amazing uh, a, a sports being played in a space, like art, Ayesha can tell you more about the art. Uh, so yeah, that I think uh, is great all happening in space nowadays. The cooks, we need to make food in space. Yes, I want to I wanna be the first chef in space. <laughs> yeah, I, I met Aisha through the, all the environment of, of schools. I mean, she has a fantastic background of, of artists who's touching on textile and so on. I mean, we have we met here through yeah. this uh, environment. So I absolutely uh, think what you're saying, Camilo, is absolutely true, that all of these um, links to space and people should really um, see how it um, allows them to become part of this whole uh, ecosystem around uh, around uh, space and, and play their role that is suited for them. Indeed. Ayesha, any final remarks from your side? Yeah, so I just wanted to add that uh, this entire conversation and why we're doing these sessions, the entire idea is that the parents, students, researchers, whoever is watching, that they feel that this conversation is relevant to you because you know, obviously, Hilda is an expert in this field, and that's why we have her, you know, giving us idea about each and every different kinds of, uh, you know, fields that we discussed today. But the entire idea is to kind of open this dialogue to everyone, and that's what Camila said, that the space is for everyone. Uh, every culture should be welcome there. We're still figuring out what that would look like for us as space links um, in the future, but I think that we can start shaping it today as artists, as you know, if we can imagine it. Uh, and, and I think that's what I would like to, for everyone to think about, you know, these are the last words. Everyone should think about how they can make the space, uh, you know, a better space for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. And and reach out. I mean, if you want to, if, if you don't know how you relate and you want to find out, well, reach out. I, I think all of us, um, you can reach us either through LinkedIn or, whatever other means absolutely you can reach out to us guys if you don't ask your answer will always be no <laughs> so go for the yes so i think um, what i'm going to do is just summarize uh, firstly we're going to be at the gtc keynote on march the 21st uh allison so really looking forward to that we're going to spread the word uh, now uh, we we've talked about um what we're doing uh meta space meta vision is ice cubes um, our goal is very simple. This is the age where science, creativity, and entrepreneurship intersect. And if they are intersecting, they're intersecting at a pace which is not just exponential, but it's super rapid. So we've come up with a solution where we believe by having access to uh, frontier technology, having access to space, uh, means that you get to really um, be part of that conversation and shape that conversation. 
And as a result of that, we're building this network of space innovation labs. These are physical uh, uh, innovation centers directly connected to the ISS courtesy of Hilda Space Apps and Ice Cubes. So not only do you get to go in there and have direct access to the space environment, we are also connecting it with our metaversity or metaverse environment, which means you can be born in Rwanda, not have a space agency, still have access to space, learn at skills at the same time. Like we talked about some of the things like artificial intelligence. We talked about 3D printing. You know, you look at things like um, the, uh, uh, the metaverse and omniverse, the industry. So those who are thinking, OK, we get the education part, but I'm a business. Well, when it comes to metaverse and, and we look at concepts like the omniverse uh, that we've seen in NVIDIA, we're not just shouting it out for no reason. The physics behind the fact that you can look at the materials in, in, in within the physics engine and, and know, for example, what a certain element will do in that environment. This is what we're creating. We're very excited to announce. So far, we have eight space innovation labs. We're going to be looking forward to announcing this network next week with some wonderful, wonderful collaborators. Uh, KAUST is going to be one of our destinations uh, in Saudi, um, where we're really looking forward to uh, uh, you know, doing some great work out there. So with that, thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed the live. Um, Camilo, Aisha, thank you. You were all brilliant. And for schools and institutions, if you're thinking about how to get involved in terms of the learning environment and working with these advanced skills, reach out to us. If you're a business and thinking, okay, how do I use earth observation? How do I use remote sensing? How do I get that strategic edge? Reach out to us. And uh, most importantly, Hilda, I know I drive you crazy, but that's my job. Uh, you're absolutely amazing. Thank well, you, you don't so you don't only you. drive in the crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, Hilda, we're going to let you have the last words. Thank you so much for joining. Oh, thank you, guys. It was a pleasure, and I I love the synergetic craziness because that's what we should set out to do all together. Um, I think that's what drives us as humankind to get further <laughs> um, into all of this. Um, it's a bit of craziness and a bit of uh, spice and a bit of. Uh, everything on, on top of that. So if we can uh, get it there and, and bring all of these forces together, I absolutely love it. So thank you very much. Um, we'll see my Thank you, Hilde, for accepting our, our last minute call to join us today in our live. And everybody, <laughs> keep tuned for our next lives. We are going to keep um, having these conversations every Tuesday and Thursday. Uh, we have a, a lot of exciting things to share with you and a lot of amazing guests. Stay tuned. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.